Let's look in the Shulchan Aruch on page 161. It says Maran at the top of the page, Halacha Chet. So Siman Chet, Halacha Chet. You should have in mind, Behit Atfo, when he wraps himself in his talit. What, what is he supposed to be thinking about when he wraps himself in his talit? Some people might be thinking, oh, it's so nice in here, I wish I could just stay here and take a nap. Everyone has their own things they think about under their talit. You should have in mind, Shetzivanu HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Hashem commanded us, Lihit Atef Bo, to wrap ourselves in it. Kedesh and his skull, in order so that we may remember Kol Mitzvotav, all of his mitzvot, not just to remember them, but la sotam, to remember them in order to do them, to fulfill them. There's a nice math equation you might help me out with. How the tzitzit equals 613. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. How I don't know the, the math. It's just very simple. Every time I forget it, then someone I've tells me. It and it seems like with the five knots and the eight strings and right. the twirls, it comes out to some kind of 613. Right. Well, the truth is that Tzitzio don't really have five knots and eight strings and all the... Tzitzio always had eight strings and one knot. Everything after the first knot, closest to the clothing, is already custom. Uh, for example, in Morocco, they used to tie Yud K Vav K. Uh, five, six... No, ten, five, six, five. That's how they would do it. In Sephardic countries, they would tie seven, eight, eleven, thirteen... And this would come out to the number 39, <clears throat> like Tal, Du, all kinds of things. Uh, the Kabbalists added a swirl to it. Tashkenazim do like the Svardim, but without the, the little braid around it. They just do 7, 8, 11, 13. The Rambam had one knot and either 7 or 13 twists, but no other knots. So only one knot, the twists without any knots. So on and so forth, all kinds of different customs. And those are not important. After the first knot, the rest of it is this culture. So what are you supposed to have in mind when you wrap yourself in your talit? HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded me to wrap myself in my talit in order so that I remember his mitzvot and fulfill them. So you mean if the knots um, unravel and you only have one knot there nearest the talit, it's still a culture? Absolutely. How so? Or maybe, or maybe the strings ripped until that knot or something? Well, I don't know. Maybe. I, I'm not sure. That could invalidate well, it. Well, I remember I had a, you know, this, I have this 25-year-old Talit, and I had the, the old tzitzit on, and you said they were kosher, and they were worn all the way back up. Right, because they still had the main elements that you need. So I would still recommend to tie... Them. You did replace the tzitzit on them? Okay, beautiful. So then, yeah. I should have gotten the tzitzit then. Okay, for the next time you upgrade. 25 years from now. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't want to wait 25 years to do another mitzvah. <laughs> when There's you get nine, your uh, 90, extra talit. Right. 90, 25 years. Almost. Until 120, so he can do <laughs> even two talit or two chilet. <laughs> so, uh, let's see what it says in the Halakha Bra. The bottom of 161, or more like the middle of 161. But the bottom of the halakha bara. It says kavana, the bold words, the second set of bold words. Kavana be mitzvah tzitzit, the thoughts that you're supposed to have, the intentions in the mitzvah tzitzit. So the, the origin behind this halakha is important. Let's read the first line here. Halakha, I don't know how to pronounce this word properly, but I hope it's rovachat or. Biadenu. The halakha is very. There's a halakha that's that's in our hands, meaning it's a famous halakha. If one of them is meant as a vowel and one of them is meant as a pronunciation, for example, the word mitzvah. There are the word, Sometimes you'll find two vavs inside. It's not that common. Not mitzvah, but in mitzvot. You'll find mitzvot, normally it's mem, tzadi, vav, taf, but they'll add in an extra vav, one vav to say v, and one to go o. Halachar, Omar, Rabbi Adenu, she mitzvot, 
צריכות כוונה, מצוות need כוונה. Oh, very good. This actually, this argument is found in the uh, when we say l'shem yichud. When I do a mitzvah, can I just do the mitzvah, or do I actually have to think about why I'm doing this mitzvah? You should think why you're doing it. You should is one thing. But can I make the argument that if a person puts on tzitzit and has no intention of fulfilling the mitzvah of tzitzit because he's not thinking about it, just throws it on him, he's wearing it because he's cold, uh, for whatever reason, can I say that he does not get the mitzvah even though he did the action because his mind was in the wrong place? No, well, yeah, I think well some things it. are different, but... Sorry. No, it's going ahead. No, it's... Because you... No, I'm getting a little too mystical maybe, but there's parts of you that know that you're doing it. Like you could say your higher souls, like your... Yeshua. Okay, you're not alone in this. I once yeah. saw Rabbi Zini from Haifa write a, a thesis like this. Uh, but it's not what Shulchan Aruch says, but, but he does argue with Shulchan Aruch and say what you're saying. Like, leave the Jews alone. It's enough they do mitzvot. You also want them to think about it or else they won't get any credit for it. Um, that I, I hear the emotion in it. We just have to figure out a halakha. Uh, I'll tell you a ramification about this uh, before I get to you. The Vilma Gaon... He believed that because you mitzvot need kavana, you know how you take the four species on on Oshana, uh, on Oshana, Sukkot. They need kavana when you teach, or do you know? <laughs> For the record, we don't take eleven to talk on Oshana. No new customs should come out of this. On Sukkot, when you take the Alba Minin, the four species, the Sephardic custom is to first take the love, make the blessing, and then lift the etrog. The Ashkenazi custom is to hold both of them, but one of them upside down, the etrog upside down, and make the blessing and then turn it over. What's the reason for this custom? Hmm? What's the reason for... This custom, for turning it over. Just in case you don't have kavana, you don't... Like What's the mitzvah? Yeah, because you're picking it up and you haven't uh, said the... What's the mitzvah of the four species? To take it to... to what do we make the blessing? To, to pick al, al, al... Netilat love and taking the four species. So that the moment I pick them up off the table in the right way, the right order, the right facing them, I already did the mitzvah. So how can I make a blessing now? Right. So the way we solve this problem is by either we lift up half of them and then only the second, the second half once we make the blessing, or the Ashkenazim they pick it up upside down so you're not fulfilling the mitzvah and then flipping it over. The Vilna Gaon he used to take the love and the talk the right way, hold it in his hand, walk with it to shul. Pray Shacharit holding it, make a blessing on it after he carried it for this much time. The reason being, he had in his kavanah, I don't want to receive the mitzvah of love and the yet. That's how far he believed kavanah went. That you can have kavanah not to fulfill a mitzvah. So you could pick it up like any object and just carry it. Carry it without the purpose of doing without the mitzvah. If exactly. You, if you have that level of uh, yeah. awareness. Awareness. Yeah. But it's a very high level of awareness. It's not yeah. easy to do. You might end up using your new God for being your new love as a tax credit. <laughs> well, anything's possible. <laughs> so let's go to the back of the book, perhaps. So I was going to mention to you that you told us about putting on tefillin, that you can put on tefillin without saying a bracha and still get... Because there you're having in mind to put on tefillin. You're not putting it on because uh, your arm is cold and you want to wrap it up with leather straps. You're putting it on because you want to do tefillin. Actually, you'll make your arm colder by putting. Oh, okay. So I don't know. Meaning, I don't know what a, what a person how what they would do with tefillin. But for example, let's say a person wrapped themselves up in a talit, not because they wanted to wear tzitzit, but because they were cold. So okay, I once came into a shul to give a speech, and all the ladies were wearing talitot. An Orthodox shul. <laughs> orthodox shul. You thought you were in a thing. I didn't know where I was. They were just cold, so everyone wrapped themselves up in the talitot. If you would have dressed the shul, you would have been so cold. Yeah, but I, the, the truth is that uh, they weren't, I know we're talking here about ladies, but if they were men, they wouldn't be getting the mitzvah of tzitzit because they were not intending at all to wear tzitzit. They were only using it to stay warm. because to stay warm. Let's turn to the back of the book here. 
I'd say the truth is that if they were doing it, I'm putting on my talit. I forgot to make a blessing. So you would get the mitzvah of wearing a talit. The blessing doesn't hold you back from... Uh, to page Ayn Dalit. I know it's hard. There's no English l- numbers back here. I don't know why. Ayn Dalit, the top right of the page. It should say Ad. Ayn and then a Dalit. So <coughs> Top right page. It's the right page and the top right of the page. Okay. Ayn Dalit. There's no English numbers. Oh. Is that where we are? Yes. That's where we are. So let's read here. In the small letters in the middle of the page. Bimasechet. Is it? The Rashi script? No, not the Rashi script. Above the Rashi script. Yeah. Bimasechet Rosh Hashanah. In tractate Rosh Hashanah in the Talmud. On page 28 and 29. Nechleku tanaim The authors of the Mishnah and the authors of the Talmud argued, Im mitzvot tzrichot kavana. Do mitzvot need kavana or not? Do you need to have the intention when you do the mitzvah? Or can you just do the mitzvah and you'll get a mitzvah for it anyways? Va'af rabuteinu harishonim. And even our rabbis, the rishonim, there are these terms down? The rishonim, nechleku bedinze. They even they argued about this, whether you need to have in mind to do a mitzvah or not. Umaran haShulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Cairo in the Shulchan Aruch, Bihilchot Kriyat Shema in the laws of Shema, Katav he writes, Yes Omrim, some say, She'en mitzvot tzrichot kavana, that mitzvot don't need intention. ויש אומרים, some say, שצריכות כוונה. They do need כוונה. לצאת באותה עשיית מצווה, in order to fulfill the מצווה. We know that when Maran says, some say and some say, who's the halakha like? The second one. When Maran right. says an opinion, he says, halakha is like this, but some say it's like that, we always go like the first opinion. Whatever he said without some say. But if there are two, some say this, some say that, some say the third thing, we always go based on the last one. But here, Maran does us a favor, and then he says, V'chen halakha. And this is the halakha, like the second opinion. Different order. What? Different order. Must we take the first time? Well, yeah, there's a different order, but Maran gave us these rules. Yeah, I wrote this book with these ideas in play. V'chen halakha. So Maran says the halakha is that mitzvot need kavana. So let's ask you a question. In order to need kavanah, do you have to actually say it out loud? I am doing this mitzvah in order to... Do you have to say it, or can you just think it in your head? But we still have formulas to help you. Very good. So there is kavanah. Well, I should shake up the world for the good. A lot of things need to be washed away with this rain. Um, not just the pollution. The spiritual pollution, physical pollution... <laughs> Um, thinking kavana is enough. Now, are there things that help us reach the right kavana by saying them verbally? Yes, there are. Like a bracha, like l'shem yichud, like such things. They're meant to help guide us into having kavana when we do them. How many of you feel so hard when you wash your hands? You feel like distress. You wash your hands on the Seder night for the vegetables, but you don't make a bracha. It almost feels like it didn't count. Yeah. Like, why am I doing this without a blessing? And obviously there are halachot here, but look how much the bracha has improved the feeling behind the mitzvah. There was a time where people didn't make brachot on anything before our rabbis instituted this. Sometimes it feels like on the Seder night that it's a deliberately you're washing, you're doing karpas just so you can ask the question about why am I washing without a bracha? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's a night of... Though it's, it's not true, but, but, yeah. yes. I have a question. Yes. Everybody who comes to visit, why are we washing our hands and <laughs> not say the blessing? Not say the blessing. Right. Once, three times, dry my hands. Right. They know what they're doing. Why are they not saying the blessing? Because uh, there's no curiosity. Everybody does. Oh, so it's not just for curiosity. The halakha is that when you eat vegetables that are in liquids, you have to wash your hands beforehand. Now, listen, I don't want to get as complicated tonight. People eat all kinds of 
canned vegetable pickles in a jar that are wet and they don't wash their hands beforehand. I'm not talking here about the lenient opinions, but according to Shulchan Aruch, you must wash your hands before it's served. Water. Are in water or grapes, for example. Have you ever been to house to serve grapes at the end of a meal and they're all wet? What's the reasoning for that? Impurity, tuma, that is passed on to the hands. Now it seems like some Jews stop doing it because we're not so careful about purity and impurity today. Uh, this is not a discussion though for right now, but it's a good discussion to have if we bring it up at a point where I could bring us sources and analyze them together. Uh, here, <coughs> here, you see that there are things. Like that is right. All of you are right in that thinking is enough to get kavanah. But verbalizing it is a nice help to get you. It's a nice. Uh, uh, That's why the Shmona Esrei is said in a low whisper. In order so that. What? Why? Because it helps the Kavanah, just not by thinking it. it but by saying it. Very good, right. You cannot. You're not allowed to just think a tefillah. You have to say it. And also, you when we say, uh, open my lips, you know, at the beginning. Hashem, Sfadai Tifnach. Exactly. Yeah. That also is a helps you build kavanah because you were saying the only reason I'm even praying this is because you are allowing me to do so. Very nice. You a certain kind Very of nice. Right there. Oh, Hashem. So it says here, in any case, all the opinions, even those who say mitzvot need kavanah, don't need kavanah, they all agree. You don't have to actually verbalize it with your mouth that you're doing this for kavanah. Vedai bechavanat hamachshava bilvad. It's enough to just think it in your mind. Umikolsh again. How much more so? Kshem mevarech kodem asayat mitzvah. The mitzvot that you do that have blessings before them. Not all mitzvot have blessings, but those that have blessings. Sheish lomar. You could say shah bracha he gilui dat. The bracha is your kavanah. The bracha. I'm saying I'm doing this because uh, I'm wrapping myself in a talit. Even though the mitzvah doesn't tell you the details, why am I doing this mitzvah? But that mitz- it's the knowledge that I'm doing this because Hashem commanded me to do it. Asher kedishanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu. Hashem commanded me to do it. K'mo shekatav b'chidushim ha'ritva, like the ritva writes. V'im ken, and if so, en chova min hadin, there's no halachic obligation, lomar l'shem ichud, to say l'shem ichud, Before you do every single mitzvah. That would get sometimes quite time consuming. Right. And most communities didn't do the Shem Yichud. Many did, many didn't. Um, And so for here you know that there's an argument. Do mitzvot need kavanah, do they not? We do hold the Korn Shulchanuch, the mitzvot need kavanah. And therefore it's important to have the proper kavanah when you do it. When you do the Shem Yichud before Baruch Shammar, is that for all of the tefillah or for that one specific tefillah? You're talking about the Sephardic Siddur or the Chabad Siddur? The Sephardic So in the Sephardic Siddur, the Lashem Yichud we do then is for all of Shacharit. Um, we do one before Milcha, before Arvit. In the communities that didn't do the Lashem Yichud, it seems like the only one they did do was the one before Sefirah Ta'omer. Why? I don't know. But even the Ashkenazi communities which never say Lashem Yichud, they do, many of them have a custom, even before Sfarat Omer, to say, Harenu Muchanum Zuman, the Kayim Mitzvah that I have right. in mind, before that, and Berkat Hamazon. I don't think you could separate uh, Sfarat Omer from Kabbalah completely. It could be, it could be that that's the reason behind it. Yes, it could be. Although I noticed in the uh, Stamar Ashkenaz prayer books, they don't list, you know, Gavura, Sheba Gavura. No, they don't, it's true. They leave it out. Yeah. Um, now, in... in Regards to the Shem Yichud. We mentioned the Shem Yichud before. I told you about the Ben Chai that wrote 14 pages explaining what does the Shem Yichud mean. Just the other night, it was maybe 3 o'clock in the morning, I was learning a book that I don't have in print on my phone. And I found something, I had to send it to my father because my father would resonate with it so much. Um, it's one of the writings of Rabbi Yosef Masas, where he was asked, what does the Shem Yichud mean? And he answers something beautiful, not because he answers what does the Shem Yichud mean, but because it tells you something about the spirit of the generation in which he lived. And if he lived in that generation, how much more so we do. Let me just read it to you before we do our vit. It's not a long piece, but the cynicism in it is delicious. (laughs) I use that word not lightly at all. Maybe one day you'll remind me. It's on tape, yes. Rav... Rav Masas has an introduction 
to his book, like a poem he wrote to his book. What happens when the zealots find you and they try to fight you and how you should feel when they fight you. It's a beautiful poem he wrote to his book. One day I'll share it with you, Bezat Hashem, if you remind me. So he says, Chacham Adif, a scholar is always the best. He says, it's, a, it's an expression that means that a wise man is greater than a prophet. It's an old Talmudic teaching. He says, Shalom, Shalom, hello, hello. Because one is worked for and the other is... Interesting why that is. I would have to look in the source in the Talmud what it says. Um, he says, "B'shavua cholef." Last week, Higiani Giliono Hanaim. I got your nice uh, letter. Vayetzli Emun v'Shashuim. Said I was very happy. It's all kinds of rhymes. Yishmocha Ha'el Tamim Dei. May God protect you and save you. Shaol Shaali Didi. You asked me, my dear friend, Binyan Amirat Hashem Yichud, regarding this custom to say Hashem Yichud. Al Kol Dvar Mitzvah about every mitzvah. Asher Lo Matzala. מהלכים בכל המקומות אשר דרכה בהם כף רגלו, גם בין יושבי המערב, רק בעובי מקנס. So you had a hard time, you were looking for someone to explain to you, what does it mean, יודקי, ובקי, שכינתי, all kinds of things here, what does it mean? ושאל קצת מהחכמים להודיעו פירוש הדברים, you asked some of the rabbis to explain this to you, ואין פותר אותם, and nobody could explain to you what does it really mean. ובכן דעתו מכרעת ומכרחת דלאו שפיר עבדי לאומרה and therefore you've made the decision that it's better not to say לשם יחוד since you don't understand what it means מאחר שאין לה מובן ובא ימר מיני לחוות דעתי המעט בזה and then you're coming to me to ask if I'm correct maybe you have an explanation and if not is it correct for me to stop saying לשם יחוד hold on to your chairs says תשובה here's my answer די ידידי you should know my dear friend I love question and answer books because of the the relationships that you discover inside of them. Says Kigam ani atzair. Also, I, the small one, ragil alishoni kivnei eretz moladati hanal. I have on my tongue, like all the other people in my country of origin, Morocco, lomar ad kol davar mitzvah l'shem yichud. I say l'shem yichud before I do everything. Shachrei, David, mincha, washing your hands, all kinds of things. Bli dat u bli tvuna, without any intelligence. Without any understanding, I just say it. Rak mitzvat anashim milumada. I just do it because that's the way I was taught. Im nesiat ayin lishmei kora v'zei ami mitchalti lachkor biniyan. I said it's already been a while now that I've been researching into it. Ulchapes achar poter sheiftorota. I'm trying to find an interpreter, like the dreamer, who will interpret my dream, will interpret this l'shem yichud. Al nachon, correctly. V'lo matzati and I didn't find such a person to interpret what does l'shem yichud mean. Ya'an uvayan, davar ze mekoro niftach me'a mekubalim. Says this idea was given birth to by the Kabbalist. Uvazman haze, hema v'nishlamah, tama v'nishlamah chumat ha-Kabbalah ma'arei ha-Marav. Said it's almost been many, many years since there have been Kabbalists in our cities here in Morocco. And this is a rare thing to see because it's not necessarily true, but this is the way he felt. V'tachteha, he said the true Kabbalah has been replaced im Kabbalah chadasha, with a new kind of Kabbalah. Etzel Balei Hadimayon, which was written by those who have wild imaginations. Malaal Kol Gduteha, and they're overflowing with imagination. Rak Chilufei Otiot, they always like to switch around letters. Vigematriot, and they like to find me numerical values for things. Vesodot Meulafim Bidivrei Havai, so they're all kinds of secrets that are worth nothing. Asher Badu Melibam Rekei Hamoach. He said they pulled out of their heart these empty brained people. Ulaman hit halel I don't know what it says here. Besheker. He says they like to to become famous with their lies because they show I know how to flip around letters. You, every one of you knows somebody who loves these kind of divrei Torah. Yeah. Lamdu l'shonam ezek taim midivrei balei asodot arishonim and chonim, and they all know a little bit of Kabbalah from some real, true, authentic early source. So they turn them to bitter things. So they people think that they're Kabbalists. They have all kinds of dreams and nonsense. So, but I so much wanted an answer to what is the Shem Yichud that I even lowered myself to ask these people to help me. What does the Shem Yichud mean? Uh, they're Kabbalists, no? כי כמו שפעמים רבות נמצאו גרגירי זהב בין החולות, says just like you may find gold between sand, כך חשבתי אולי ימצא אצלם אף ניצוץ אחד, 
Umimenu avir gachedet. I said, maybe I'll find in them a spark of truth, and I'll light my coals with a spark that's still left in truth inside of them. Ken chashavti ulayim, then he says, ach kasher shaltim, he said, but once I asked them, kulam hikifuni chavilot shel pirushim, they all started throwing all kinds of commentaries at me. Asher kol ish nilvav chuchma, klima panav lo tziam al piv, said any person with even a bit of intelligence would be embarrassed to explain things the way they explain them. The koshaken lechodvam, and how much more so they would be embarrassed to write them down. Kiesh bedivrehem ein kfira chalila, their words included heresy. Shaltim beez a sefer matzu advarim. I asked them which book did they find these things written inside of? Vav shem echad lo higidu, and they couldn't even mention to me one book before them that wrote down these things. Vaz yadati kihema haven, that they are, I then knew that they were emptied. V'divrahem mehevel, and their words also came from emptiness and nothingness. The rest of the letter is not so relevant, but you should know that Kabbalah is one of the deepest disciplines in Jewish thought, even if you're from those rationalists who doesn't connect to it. But the people today who run around Kabbalah this, Kabbalah that, according to the secret of the Torah, let me teach you about mysticism. What's going to happen to your soul after you die? All kinds of fools that talk nonsense. All kinds of fools. They don't know. How do you know? Who taught you? Kabbalah means you have a rabbi who taught you the secrets of the world. Who taught you it? Which person? Where did you study it? How long? Which books are you teaching from? Where are your sources? Show them to me. How old are they? And the Rabbi Yosef Marzah says, don't listen to everyone who tells you he's a Kabbalist. Sometimes all they know how to do is just flip words and letters inside out. And that's not what we're asking for. That's not the Kabbalah we're looking for. If you believe that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was one of the authors in the times of the Mishnah, then he definitely didn't write a book that consisted just of flipping around letters in front of a mirror. And you must give him a little bit more credit than that. So Bezat Hashem, uh, tomorrow, will, uh, not tomorrow, I guess Monday, we'll continue the discussion of... Um, uh, mitzvot shechot kavanah do they need kavanah do they not and then how does that apply back